Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. If you've been following along, last video we took a look at the Autodesk Inventor interface for the 2014 release. So here we are again in that, uh, that same screen that we left off in, only we've got a part file here created. So what I want to do today is kind of go over some of the fundamental aspects of creating 3D parts. Um, so what I mentioned in the last video is we were going to take a look at the model browser. So that's this here with the list of features and sketches, uh, different items that you can use to create your, your part. And in this space here, we've got the model space with our beautiful view cube that allows us to navigate very freely and easily. Um, so we're going to take a look at how we're using these different items. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to create another rook like what we've got here. So I'm just going to grab all these features and take it right to the top and we'll start fresh. So I've got a sketch in here. I still got to delete that. Okay, so uh, the first things first, when you're creating a 3D part, you need a 2D sketch. So to do that, you come up to this top left-hand corner where it says create 2D sketch. And what it's going to do is bring up these origin planes. And if you take a look at the origin folder in the model browser, you'll notice that you've got these planes here listed. So these coincide with the U UCS. So if we want to create a rook, we want to create a cylinder first. And I want to create that from the, the bottom up. So I'm looking at the top view. So this is the plane that I'm going to choose. And when I select that plane, it brings me into an orthographic view. So quite simply, to make a cylinder, all I need is a circle. I'm going to come in here and click on the origin. You'll notice that beside my cursor right now, there's an arrow pointing down to a red dot. That means that that's a geometric inferred constraint. So whatever happens with this circle, whether we change the size of it or we carve out more geometry, its center point is going to be at the 0, 0 location. So I'll click in there and I'll just drag that out and I'm just going to type in 1.25 for the diameter. So we'll get an inch and a quarter for our cylinder and with that done we have enough for our sketch. So you'll notice that once I click that create 2D sketch and selected the, the plane that I wanted I got a whole new list of tools here and this green sketch tab. Now if you're ever wondering hey why can't I do something in here and you see that green tab, that's because you need to exit the sketch before you can get back to your other tools. So that's what I'm going to do right now just by clicking on this green check mark over on the far right. And you'll notice that it brings you to an isometric view. So a good rule of thumb is when you're looking at your features in your 3D part, you'll want to see that in an isometric view so you can use the corners of your view cube. And that makes that a little bit simpler. And then when you're creating sketches, you want to look at those in a 2D orthographic view. And that's why it switches. It doesn't mean that you have to stay in the 2D orthographic view. You can use the view cube in the sketch mode, but it just makes life easier for you if you're not looking at it on an angle. So there's that. We've got a, a cylinder, or sorry, we've got a circle that we can create our cylinder with. So I'm going to click on the extrude tool. And I've only got the one profile, so it automatically selects it. And I can change what direction my extrude goes in. I can make this equidistant or flip it from one side to the other. And what I want to do is make this an inch and three quarters tall and I want to actually make it go the direction that it was first going in. Okay, So I'm going to hit OK now that I have that and you'll notice my sketch disappeared. What gives? It's, it's still there. I just got to expand this new feature here that says extrusion 7 and you'll see the sketch that I worked on. Now this says extrusion 7 because I've done this a couple times having problems with the new mic <laughs> and uh, this says sketch 9. You can rename these easily enough. You can go back in by just double clicking on it and then you can make edits to it. So if you wanted to double click that dimension and make it an inch and a half in diameter you can do that as well. So if I hit finish sketch it's going to give me a thicker cylinder. So um, I'm going to stick with the inch and a quarter so I'm just going to say um, I'm clicking on control Z a couple times and it's bringing me back to that cylinder that I wanted. So the next thing that I need to do to make this rook look correct is I need to carve some geometry out that's going to actually give it its shape. 
So one of the really nice features in uh, Inventor is they've got this tool called Slice Graphics. So the next 2D sketch that I'm going to create is going to be on one of these planes that slices my cylinder in half. The XZ is a good one. So I'll use that. And I'll come over here to my view cube so that I'm looking at it the right way. And if I hit F7 or I right click, I can come down to this Slice Graphics tool and it chops my model in half. And that's exactly what I want. I need a flat surface, not a curved one, to create this next sketch. So I also want to use this border of the existing geometry for sketch dimensions. So I'm going to say Project Cut Edges. When I click on the drop down, I'm using this tool right here. And it creates some line work around my cylinder. So I select all those lines, and I'll come up here to Construction. What this does is it changes the mode of my line work so that it's not going to create geometry, but I can still use it for reference on my line work. So notice that construction mode is off again. I come over here to the line tool, and I'm just going to create a closed profile of what I want to remove from this cylinder. So I'll come out about uh, halfway to this side, a little bit more maybe, and I'm just going to bring that down about. Uh, quarter of an inch and I can actually type in 0.25 and hit enter and it gives me that segment and I'll come over here we'll say 0.8 so notice that you can put in these dimensions and it's going to create them with the dimension for you so I made a mistake there I didn't want that to be 0.8 I wanted that to be 0.08 so now when I make that change I get the line segment that I want and if I want to get that dimension out of the way, I can just click on the number, and when I see the icon for the move, I can hold my left mouse button down, and I'll just drag that away so that this is a little bit easier to read. Okay, so we'll do the same thing over here with this one. Bring that dimension out. And you don't have to have these dimensions in there. It's not totally necessary. So I'm just going to come back to the line tool, and I'm going to start f just free drawing the rest of this. So I'm going to put another a small line in there and notice what's happening here this is important um, when I bring my cursor off of that endpoint it gives me a yellow a yellow dot when I bring it back to the endpoint it turns gray the gray dot means that I can now create an arc by holding down the left mouse button so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and drag the cursor off and you'll notice that it's creating an arc. I just want a nice 90 degree arc length so that works and then I'm gonna bring this down oh, to about there and then again I'm gonna do another arc this time bring that out to that line looks good and I'm just gonna put a couple more steps in here actually I'm gonna bring that down because I'm going to apply some more features to that geometry. So now that I've got the outline of what I want to carve, I'm just going to close this profile. Because again, you need a closed profile to do this revolve. That looks good for now. And I'll hit Finish Sketch. Okay, so now I've got a profile in there that I can use. I can't really see what's happening with it. That's no matter. Because the profile for the cylinder has already been used, when I come over to the revolve tool it's gonna automatically choose that last sketch that I used but first things first I need an axis the revolve needs an axis to work with it won't use the concentric reference of the cylinder so I'm just gonna select the cylinder and it puts a work axis in there that goes right down the middle so my next step is to click on the revolve tool and you'll notice that the profile that I created is now highlighted so I can go right to the axis right, so I can click on that in here in the model browser or in the model space and it's giving me a revolve but my option here is on join and what I really want to do is remove that geometry so I select this part and then you're starting to see that geometry come away from it so I'll hit OK and this doesn't really look like the rook that I want it's a little skinny um, so what I'm going to do is come back into my re revolution feature and select that sketch and I'm going to make some modifications to it. So I right click on the sketch and I'll hit edit sketch. 
and just go back to where I was before by hitting F7. And it's this part right here. I need that to be thicker. It looks too much like a, a chalice or something right now. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use some of these constraints um, to shift around this geometry. This one's a nice one, the collinear. If I want to make these two lines collinear, I can just click on the two of these. And right now it's dimensioned um, from one point. Oh, no, that's not the dimension. Let me just bring that back. I want to make this line and this line along this line here, this collinear that. So let's try this one more time. Go here to here. And then it brings it out. Now that made that a little problematic, so I can just grab that arc length and bring that down, just dragging it. I could be more precise, but um, I don't really care about it too much at this point. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and making it look like a rook. And the last thing, I'll just drag that out a, a little bit more. Okay, so if we hit finish sketch now, the features stay the same, but the sketch geometry has changed, so now it looks a little bit more like a rook. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is just remove some geometry from the top of this so it gives the turret effect of a rook. So to do that, I'm going to make a couple quick sketches here. Now, I could do this a couple ways. I could carve out the geometry all in one sketch, or I could do this really quick just by using the offset tool. So on a new sketch, I'm just going to use the offset tool and do a new concentric cylinder finish that sketch and now I can use that new cylinder to remove more geometry. I'm going to come down I think just an eighth of an inch on this one. Okay, I'll hit OK. So it takes that geometry out. And then I'm going to use that top plane again for one more sketch and this is where I'm going to create the turrets. Turrets. I think it's just turrets. And again somebody will correct my Canadian accent. <laughs> Anyway, here we go. So I'm going to use this rectangle feature here, this three-point rectangle, which allows me to start in the center. And I'll just come up here, just outside. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be removing geometry. So I'll type that in at an eighth of an inch as well. And that's good enough for that. So now I'm going to use this profile to remove some more geometry. I'll select that profile, and I'll flip it. So now it's automatically cutting geometry again. OK, that's good enough. And then I'm going to use the circular pattern feature to make this go all around the way it should be. So it's asking me for the features. What features do you want to make the pattern for? I'll select those here when I see them highlighted. And then it's saying, what's your rotation axis? So I want, I can use this axis that I created, or I can use these concentric references from the cylinder. Either or, it works. And I want eight instances of this. So I put eight in the placement. And if you didn't want it to go all the way around, you could do some neat stuff like say 123 or what have you. And you'll notice that it squishes the, uh, the angle. But I want it to be 360. So let's put that back as is. We'll say OK. And now I've got that look of the, the rook. OK. So when it's all said and done, you don't want to look at sketch features and work features like the axis. So you can come in to, say, the, your model browser and right-click on those features you don't want to see and just click on visibility. And now you're actually getting what you want. The other thing that you can do is uh, change the overall look. You could keep the material properties and then just change how it looks. We could make this um, look like we could just make it white. We could make it zinc. We could make it all kinds of things. There's one that I really like. It's the clear blue, but the blue on blue background doesn't look all that great. But you can make this look like anything. You notice if you change it to a metallic material, it gives you a reflection map of a parking lot. Um, and, and if you want as well, you can always check out how this looked further up the process. right? So by taking your end of part, you can move that up the model browser and it'll show you how this part has evolved. There's also a couple other features that you can add without creating any sketches like fillets and chamfers. I mentioned that I wanted to put a chamfer on this edge right here, so we'll put one of those in. Um, we can put one in, where else could we put a chamfer? I could add another one in here as well, probably. Okay, so that looks pretty neat. Now I'm starting to get a lot more 
um, detail and interesting look to this and it's adding another feature in here if you ever want to turn those off easy enough you can just come in here and say suppress feature maybe you want to see how it looks with a fillet instead so you can create multiple features and and set them up so you can try out different different looks if you're say maybe proposing something to someone uh, so just with this the f I'll go to the fillet tool just to give you an idea same sort of same sort of thing if I put that fillet in there it gives me a nice curved look as well right so maybe that's the way you want to go about it let's cancel those out and I'll come back and I'll just put the chamfer back on there and I do actually want to fill it in here so I'm going to put that one in there and another one yeah that looks pretty cool okay so final thing I'll just look at that from a an elevation perspective and that looks like a pretty neat rook so I'm happy with that um, if you guys have any problems with the sketching aspects that's probably where you might get snagged up because that's the more challenging aspect of creating parts if you do leave a comment I'll try to address it as soon as possible and uh, if there's any anything else that you had any issues with or trouble please let me know and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible um, so check back again we'll have more content soon and for the time being thanks a lot for watching bye now <laughs>